Welcome back to SnowRunner, y'all, and in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the fully console-friendly Glitchworks GWC 1984 Badger, which is based on a Jeep Comanche. Now, as of the original date and time of filming this video, this vehicle is available on the mod browser on, of course, PC, as well as uh, previous generation Xbox and previous generation PlayStation. However, as of the initial recording time, it has not been released on the next-gen console mod browser yet, although I would say give it a, a few days to a week or so after this video has been posted and check your respective consoles mud browser mud browser mod browser wow i can't talk mod browser and it should be there and you should be good to go now with that being said let's fire it up get it into the garage and see what all we can do with it in terms of customization take it out for a drive and see what this thing's all about the interior oh Come on, there we go. I went to go to the interior view, and the whole game, like, freaked out. That was so weird. The interior is awesome, though. It definitely mirrors that of this generation's Comanche and XJ. So if that's something you're looking for, especially in a low-RAM usage console-compatible vehicle, this is an amazing place to start. Now, you have the stock inline 6, which is going to give you an A- minus power-to-weight rating. You have a board and stroked inline 6, which is going to bring you up to an S. That's going to be kind of like a high-end, but still kind of vanilla game top speed. Speed. Then you have the turbo in line six, which will get you an S plus. Now, gearbox wise, you have sort of the glitch works standard order with your four speed off road, your six speed highway, and your five speed default. Now, when we normally test a glitch works vehicle, we start with the four speed off road and then we go to the six speed highway a little bit later on for the bridge jump, of course. And this video is going to be very similar to that. Now, let's see. We're definitely going to be running the six inch Skyjacker lift kit with, of course, the one ton, uh, one ton swap underneath. Now, let's see. Tires-wise, we're going to start with 33s in this list of tires, but it very quickly goes up to 36s, and if you keep on scrolling down, you'll gain access to 39s as well, and then the list repeats in the mud tire category. So, what I really like on this uh, on this rig is a set of the 39-inch GWC MT Pros, which are essentially Glitchworks' version of a Mickey Thompson Baja Pro, and winch-wise, we're going to go with the Stage 4 winch, because that one's going to be the best all-round approach. Now, bed-wise, you've got the factory roll bar, which is interesting, it's cool, if you're into that. That particular style of roll bar, I'm always back and forth about it. It's a it's a very case-by-case -case basis for me. You do have the spare tire in the bed, kind of the Baja style bed mounted spare, which I love. We are gonna do that. We also have the in-bed toolbox, which I really, really like as well. Also comes with 100 repair parts, two spare wheels, and 14 units of fuel. Now, snorkel-wise, we're definitely gonna put that on there. And for the rear bumper, we have the stock one. We also have a steel bumper, a chrome tube bumper, and a trail conqueror setup, which puts an extra spare tire and an extra 40 three units of fuel on the back, basically behind the tailgate mounted on the bumper. Now, fender flares-wise, you have the stock ones, you have the extended ones, and you also have cut fenders, which you can do to give yourself a little bit more room for articulation and for larger tires, which we're definitely going to need with these 39s. Now, front bumper-wise, you got the stock, you got the steel brush guard style, you got the chrome tube style, and you got the deep wood style. I really like this one because it's essentially a big metal bar with the stinger and then the winch mounted on top. You've also got a couple of tow hooks as well, so it's a really practical setup, especially if you're going to be out on the trails a lot. Now, lights-wise, we're going to go with the rally raid style uh, light bar setup on the roof. And then wheels wise, we've got sort of your standard order again from Glitchworks. And for this rig, we're going to go with the, G the GWC process. Now for, for vehicle color, you've got actually quite a nice, uh, quite a nice selection here. You can go between a bunch of different really nice, bright, vibrant colors. They're a little bit more on the matte as opposed to gloss side, but that's not really an issue, I don't think, for a vehicle like this. Now, I think we're to go with a nice red we'll throw beans on the dash and then now it's time to take it out for a drive and see how it does around the testing grounds now first of all firing it up you notice right off the bat that it does have a good amount of torque it's not explosively fast but i would say like that second third fourth you know kind of speed range is really really healthy it's really really good now let's make a quick whoa why are we that's weird that's, I wonder if something in the game updated, because I never get any weird lag or choppiness on the summer testing grounds. I don't get any lag or choppiness on any of the testing grounds in this game. Detour, not for us. All right, into the river. Or, well, you know what? It would help if we were in four-wheel drive. Come on. 
This thing is actually really well set up in the suspension. It's got a really nice setup with the damping, too. It's not super bouncy. It doesn't feel like it's gonna, like, flop over all the time because you hit a bump the wrong way. Let's see. Let's use that torque in high. Yo! That was awesome! You actually have a good amount of throttle modulation in high, too. Look at this! That's amazing! That is so good! Alright, let's make our way... Oh, look at that flex! Dude, that's actually really, really good. That's really, really good. Look at that. That looks awesome. That actually looks like a realistic amount of flex that a real world, uh, like literally that a real world Comanche would have. Alright, dropping into the rocks. Nice and easy, trying to not flip. So long as we don't flip, we'll be alright. Oh god. Oh no. Oh jeez. Oh jeez. Well... Uh, I guess we're gonna just have to follow this line out, because I think we're committed at this point. Come on, find your way on up. That is terrifying. We are constantly at a angle of doom. There's no way. It's just... Dude, it's just gonna hang out right there. Okay, can we readjust? Is there any possible way to readjust in a way that will make sense? Not bad, but not great. Let's see if we can take another run at this. Nope! Okay, well, we seem to have gotten ourselves into a predicament. That's fine. I'll just back up a tad farther. That should work. Yep, that should be lined up the way we need to be lined up. Shouldn't it, Beans? I think? There we go. Climbing this ridge is kind of like a tradition in these videos at this point, because every time we test a vehicle that is even remotely rock crawling friendly, I always see if it can climb that little miniature rock ridge. It just makes so much sense. All right, dropping it over the edge of this hill. Throwing it back into automatic mode, and I'm thinking that once we get it out into the mud, I'm thinking that's really gonna show us how insanely capable or not so insanely capable this thing is. I will say, though, in the shallower mud, this thing is a beast. What about in the slightly deeper mud? We're running the medium lane right now. Yo, that's... that's really good. Like, that's really, really good. I am assuming that it's going to probably get a little bit more bogged down when we go into this stuff, but there's only one way to find out, and the answer to that is, wow, absolutely a resounding yes. All it took was us literally driving into, like, barely into the edge of this mud pit, and it was like, yeah, no, you're, you're not really going to go anywhere, are you? Unless you put it in low. If I put it in low plus, it would most likely start spinning, so I'm going to leave it in standard low. We're going to creep through here. We're going to be fine, I think, I hope, crossing my fingers and hoping for the best on that one. But let's kind of work that front axle back and forth a little bit, see if we can feel for some grip. Let's see, pop it into low plus, there we go, automatic mode, high range, let's send it! Not bad, like genuinely not bad at all. I know I don't usually take vehicles through the little flex obstacle, but I really want to take this thing through here to see what it's like. Because I feel like it's going to do really, really well. Oh, look at that. Dude! Not only that, but, like, look at the detail on that front axle, too. This thing looks really, really nice. And not only does it look really, really nice, but it looks nice while also getting the job done. And it's a really nice vehicle to drive. It's just the dynamics of driving it just all feel really, really smooth. And I would definitely recommend, if this is available on your respective console mod browser, definitely give it a try. Like, even if you're not a big fan of the Comanche in general, I would definitely recommend uh, trying this out because... It is definitely more along that realistic uh, kind of performance side with obviously a little bit of an added extra torque. But like if you're looking for something that feels realistic while you're going down, you know, backwoods trails or doing some rock crawling, this is going to be right up there with some of the best of them because it doesn't have, you know, it's got a really good amount of flex, but it doesn't have so much that, you, that it feels over the top. It's also got a really, really good amount of power, but not so much that it feels over the top. And this is not to say anything bad about vehicles that are like, you know, you know, wild and extremely fast and over the top. I love those too, don't get me wrong, but I know that there are sometimes a lot of people that are looking for that more realistic experience, and I think depending on which engine you put in this thing, it could definitely give you that type of experience. So let's make our way over to the bridge jump now, because it basically aced the dips obstacle, but before we go over there, we're gonna have to throw the, let's see, not that, there we go, the highway transmission in it. Now that we've got the highway transmission in this thing, it should, should, crossing my fingers and hoping for the best here, absolutely freaking rip. 
It's, oh god, it's definitely faster. Easy. It's not, it, like, it's very slippery on pavement, don't get me wrong, but it's not uncontrollable like some of the other vehicles uh, that you may have driven on pavement. But that's, again, that's not really down to the vehicles. That's more down to the fact that SnowRunner, uh, the physics system is programmed to basically hate pavement driving. Up the hill it goes. Okay, I've basically been flooring it this whole time, and I'm impressed that we didn't slide off the road with how slippery the pavement physics are. All right, full sendage. Fifth. Sixth. There's sixth gear. Rolling full throttle, sixth gear. Oh my god. I have never seen a Glitchworks vehicle land that flat. Like, I've had vehicles by Glitchworks do a good job on the bridge jump before, but I've never had one land that flat. I mean, that was literally, it landed perfectly flat. So, Maybe this thing's got a little bit of a uh, little bit of pre-runner in it as well. But if you guys enjoyed this look at this really, really awesome rig, make sure to let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new, and I will see you guys next time. Talk to y'all later.